You should text shot this one just as if you're not paying attention, just the whole time. I Me mean, would be a bad bit. I Me mean, would do that doing Pete's Dragon. What? Just text? You'll just text, and I'll just talk about Pete's Dragon so much. <laughs> oh, did we. Oh, did you talk about Pete's Dragon already? Oh, I had so much to say. Oh, no. <laughs> but no, you have to watch that. I know, I do. Okay. Hey, we're two fat guys. And we watched even more Disney. Uh, we are past the Renaissance now, uh, onto the Boo. aptly named post Renaissance. Oh, they're the worst. Boo. That, that's not true at all. That was the cat. God damn it, cat. She's very good at impressions and making my mouth move. <laughs> Um, it's dangerous. Oh, yeah, yeah this is the post Renaissance. So, this is this, uh, Fantasia 2000, Dinosaur, uh, The Emperor's New Groove, uh, Atlantis, Lost Atlantis Lost. The Lost Empire, Lilo and Stitch, and Treasure Planet. Come on, it's not that hard. It's the alien ones are last. It's easy to remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, this area, it was, not as, it was not as critically acclaimed or financially successful overall as the Renaissance, as you might imagine. Uh, they didn't, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't it, like. Just from the extremely high bar that Disney had set in the 90s, yeah. it did not meet up to it. Personally, I found myself... I, like so, This is the section I had the most where I hadn't seen, except for like the super old, obscure ones. Um, and I think it's just... I don't know if maybe I was finding myself too old or too cool for Disney at this point. Um, it's just possible. This is we were being like 13 to 15. Yeah, like I know I saw a dinosaur... Um, Typical 13 to 15 year old boy, not really Disney demographic yeah, at that point. Yeah, I'd seen parts of Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm, from, I'm firmly in high school for some of these. Uh, even though it's not as impressive as the Renaissance, I do want to point out this is an extremely prolific period for Disney. From the year, from well, technically it starts in 1999 because Fantasia 2000 came out on December 31st. Of they came out <laughs> came out at midnight on December 31st. Just in case the world ends, we want to get a little bit of money. It counts. Yeah, it technically counts as 1999. But so basically, from January 1st, 2000 through probably middle of the year 2002, they came out with six movies: Fantasia 2000, Dinosaur Emperor's New Groove, Atlantis Lost Empire, Lilo Stitch, and Treasure Planet. All came out between 2000 and 2002. That's, Which may explain a little bit about their quality. I could see that. If they were kind of... A lot of these seemed a, a little more rushed. Yeah, um, I though I don't think the like the animation quality didn't suffer. Like, it still looks good. Yeah. It, um, just polishing-wise. I don't think they really gave a whole lot of time for that. Yeah, I think it's very similar. Look-wise, it's very similar to the late Renaissance. Because you have two that are sort of very good, more realistic images. And then two that are more mm -hmm. stylized. Um, and then you have Fantasia 2000 and Dinosaur also there. <laughs> Hi, guys. Also, yes. All right, so let's start with Fantasia 2000. At least New Year's Eve at midnight, because they're weird like that. Even though the millennium doesn't start 2001, that whole argument, blah, 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 blah. Um, so there are a lot of sequences in this. Some are just, eh. And some of which Sam literally forgot before doing this video. I still forgot. Mm -hmm. I don't remember a toy soldier. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mention them all real quick and then we'll give quick impressions on them and then move on, which I feel yeah. like is the best way to handle this. That's fair, yeah. Uh, there's six of, we should point out first, Steve Martin. Steve he's Martin, evolved. best part of the movie. Yes. Hands down. Steve Martin tends to be the best part of any movie that he's in. It's true. Bowfinger? I tried to look for that the other day. I couldn't even find a download online. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to derail this Disney video, which I know we never do. <laughs> Why were you trying to find Bowfinger? Because uh, Robert Downey Jr. is in it, apparently. What? Yeah. Let's find Bowfinger. <laughs> See? Wall it has to be in a Walmart bin. We'll just dig through the Walmart That's true. bin. It'll like, be I'll, there. Like, I'm, I'll, I will pay for it. I just literally couldn't find it anywhere. Like, iTunes, like, that's not a movie. I, well, I didn't check iTunes. I'm not, I didn't, wasn't up to paying for it yet. <laughs> like, I will pay for it. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to make sure we were saying I got it. All right. Uh, so, Fantasia 2000. Now that, we're, now that we've talked about Bowfinger as much as we need to do on this Disney video. Uh, first section, we, we codenamed CGI Butterflies. Uh, it was... Basically, like, it was kind of experimental animation with computer. It was this guy. Which, yeah, like. Which worked. However, my biggest problem is that since I've seen Pixar Story, I've seen, like, I saw Pixar and John Lester doing this shit in, like, the 80s. Yes. Like, so this was like, oh, you guys are bad at CG. You should. No, we're just trying to, like, we just now got it. We got a computer for the first time. <laughs> they let us come out of our cave. And... Like, parts of them, like, I've seen better computer animation in, like, screensavers at that point. So. Yeah. Like, while I'm glad they are still trying to do experimental stuff, the, the CG was just so rudimentary that it, it really took me out of it. Uh, next is Space Whales. You and I both hated. Just not interesting in any way. There's no whale singing at the opera. There's no Space Baby of 2001. It was just nothing. Yeah. It was annoying, long, way too long. It's probably, it had to be the longest sequence in the movie. At least it felt the longest. Yes, certainly did. 
Ah, oh, terrible space whales. So boo space whales. That's our opinion. Uh, however, probably the best sequence of it was uh, based on Al Hirschfeld's animation style Rhapsody in Blue. It's just basically the animation of city life set to Rhapsody in Blue following these like five or six different people and how their lives intersected. Very stylized. Yes. Um, graphic at times and ah, oh, the, the the best kind of things you want out of animation. Yeah. Uh, it was it was really solid stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised I did not remember that because that that one might be worth the price of admission alone. So if nothing else, certainly sh- check the Rhapsody in Blue section. I'm sure it's on the, the YouTube. Which is a good thing about this and the early package films is you could, when it worked, it worked really well, and you could justify seeing something for a lot of that. Yeah. Um, then there's there's one Toy Soldier. I forget the full name of it. Uh, this one was interesting because if I'm remembering correctly, it was music that was not intended to tell this story, but they they. They'd found a way to tell a story along with this song, and it's about basically this this one-legged toy soldier trying to rescue this other toy from this evil Jack in the Box. Um, no and it was, it was there was some CG and there was some uh, traditional animation. It was really interesting to, to look at. It was not quite as it's, with with the shorts. Pixar is kind of ruining this whole thing for me because <laughs> like having email CG in there made me immediately think of Pixar shorts, especially having living toys made me think of Pixar. And I'm like, man, the Pixar shorts are, are so much better at getting emotion even quicker than this. Um, but they did a good job of, you know, going along to music, which Disney has always been great at. Uh, it, it looked cool. It, that one's not bad. It's not like it Space Whales. Uh, the, the Probably the second best section, if it's not Rhapsody in Blue, it's the Flamingo with the Yo-Yo. Yes. Uh, I think it's called, it's called like Parade of the Animals or something. It has like an f- official name. But really, the, the presenter goes like, hey, what would happen if you gave a bunch of Flamingos a Yo-Yo? And yeah, and it was like a bunch of, like one flamingo who was like into this yo-yo, and the other ones were trying to get him to stop yo-yoing, and that's the plot. And uh, it's probably about like three but it was, to five minutes. And yeah, it's it was but just delightful, fun, slapsticky humor that Disney has consistently throughout this entire marathon done well. Mm-hmm. Um, like slapstick is is slapstick is hard in live action. I can't even imagine how tough it'd be to animate and like get that timing. Just right, but or maybe it's I mean, that's easier. Maybe that's the trick. Maybe it's super easy because then you can just frame by frame plan it out. I, I guess, but like I, I don't. Does comic timing work like that? As like, far as I'm concerned, animation that's is true. Still magic. That's I'm true. I'm so shitty at drawing stuff. Like animation is still magic to that me. That is absolutely true. I, I I I I'm not sure how hard that is. I'm not sure how hard that is to to fix a mistake if you realize it. You're like, oh, this timing's not quite right. We need to add twelve more frames of mm-hmm. of filler here. Like how how do you? Yeah. Um, yeah, so animation's magic, so even stuff that we don't like, that it's still all magical to us. Uh, okay, then they just replayed Sorcerer's Apprentice in its entirety. So, go back and listen to our other video. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you our opinions there. Uh, and then there's an interesting section set to Pomp and Circumstance, most famous for playing through graduations, mm-hmm. or my high school self mixing it with the Imperial March, because that's the sort of thing I did back then. What, uh, you were a nerd? <laughs> wasn't, I know, I had it so well. <laughs> you seem so cool now. Uh, it's all a ruse. <laughs> um, it was, but they said to it, the story of Noah is portrayed by Donald Duck, which a lot of great Donald Duck bits in it. Like yes. he, I was confused by the pop and circumstance of it all, but great Donald Duck short. Yeah, very entertaining. Don, yeah, imagine Donald Duck trying to have two of every animal and keep them in bay. That's what happened, and it was awesome. Yes. So very enjoyable. He, he thinks he loses Daisy, and she thinks he loses Donald, and mm-hmm. they already go on the ship, and then it's not till they're like landed and. Uh, putting all the animals back that they, they find each other. And it's, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and then the last one was uh, the Firebird Suite, which was, this is sort of the every frame of painting piece of the of the film. Um, it, it looked gorgeous. It, it looked gorgeous. It goes on a little long, I think, in my opinion. Um, and it doesn't really go anywhere you don't expecting it to. Uh, but it's another one that's sort of depicting, uh, you know, a, a, classic, a piece of classical music. And it's like, okay, we're going to set this, this. It was and very Fantasia. It was very Fantasia, but it was it was like the I was like, oh, this is like Fantasia, but with nice modern traditional animation. Um, and imagine if you pause any, yeah, you know, if you pause any portion of that, it's going to be just this gorgeous scene. Um, it goes on a little long, but it's it's great to have your eyeballs on. So. Yes. Um, but that's really it. So Fantasia two thousand, a lot of shorts, as you might imagine. Dinosaur. Dinosaur came out in the year two thousand. Not to be confused with dinosaurs, which is an ABC sitcom that I love and have the DVDs for. Or uh, Walking with Dinosaurs, which came out in a similar year and they stole the technology for. Or Walking with, Di- with Dinosaurs, the stage arena show with mm-hmm. giant animatronic dinosaurs. Which mm-hmm. is also fun. Uh, yes. I enjoyed better than Dinosaur, frankly. Yes. but Dinosaur, it's it's disappointing on a couple levels. It's their first big attempt to do CG 
for a whole movie. Um, what they did one really interesting thing that they stole from Walking for Dinosaurs, which is they filmed live action scenery. Like they went, like all the backgrounds were live action. Yeah, like everything was just, and then they just animated the CG characters on top of it. So they went to the desert or to the jungle or whatever they needed, and they just filmed there, and they got all the footage they needed and animated on top of that. Which took me a second, like it was you know a, a couple minutes into the film before I mm-hmm. realized that, um, and, and it was only when something dropped into water. Yes, and You're I was like, like, "That water's amazing." I was like, "Except," I was super skeptical right away. I was like, "That was just water, like that." Uh, this and was two thousand, and I'm looking at all these other characters, and I'm remembering how much t- trouble they had doing water in like Road to El Dorado, which uh, I think was still after this. And I was like, "I don't believe that." Yeah, sorry, like water stuff. That was actual water, uh, and then I just like. Looked carefully at the backgrounds. And I was like, "Oh shit, yeah." And then mm-hmm. Clayton was like, "Oh yeah, these are all these are all real dummies." Are real. I was like, "Oh, oh, all right." But the, in our defense, this dinosaur movie, of course, Clayton would know about it. Yes. Um, this it, it's it, it, the real backgrounds. It's interesting to look at it now because now that we know what CG is supposed to look like and how good it can be, I'm not sure if it helps or hurts more. Because in one hand, it juxtaposes these very rough computer animated characters next to just real life. Yeah, but it, at the same time, there's also less terrible CG to look at. Yeah, it makes... Uh, I, I made this point during the movie. It makes the movie better. It makes the CG animation worse. Yes. That's, that's, that's I think, the consensus that we, that we had to reach here. This one's kind of let down. I think they were so focused on getting a CG movie that they missed what, makes, what made all the Disney movies around this time great. Um, they sort of like half-conceived story ideas that don't really go anywhere, and just everyone is a blank character caricature yes um so basically okay you have some yeah, I didn't care about any of these characters. have some interesting concepts like, okay this 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 family dinosaurs gets attacked and this egg rolls and gets found by mammals and this is mammal propaganda and we're mammals so since the fact that we don't love it tells you that there's something <laughs> wrong with this movie um he's found and he raised by this group of mammals then it raising him uh and then comets start hitting the earth and then their their home gets destroyed so they're escaping they come across this huge herd of other dinosaurs that are uh, walking on, you're like, okay, you can do some Tarzan stuff with this. He's meeting dinosaurs for the first time. He knows these mammals. Really, yeah, all they do is like, oh, we're no. I'm... Basically, all they use that for is like, okay, well, mammals have like work more in tribes, even though this is like a apparently a giant tribe of dinosaurs. It's like, oh, we're in tribes, so we should all work together. And it's like, aren't they working together though? <laughs> and it's just, and they set up like the the current leader is just mean and hates people and wants to leave people behind, like without even thinking about it. And so everyone's just like, a pale caricature. Yeah, it's not that good. It's not that good. Uh, the action's not that good. The resolution's not that good. The plot's not that good. Um, I like the brachiosaur, but only because I like brachiosaur. Mm-hmm. Like not, not for anything to do with her character. I like the, the little mammal creatures. Um, yeah. They were interesting to look at. Yeah. Even though the personalities were still kind of flat. I mean, well, the only one that really works the character was, like, the little brother one. Uh, the one who wanted to be a ladies' man but wasn't. Yes. Mostly because that's the sort of role that you would get a character in. Mm-hmm. So he felt, like, about as fully developed as <laughs> yes. I would want that character to be. Um, whereas the, the love interest and the rest of the dinosaurs and the villain and the hero all just felt flat. That's a jerkosaurus. Oh my god. Just to give you a quote from the movie. Emperor's New Groove! Uh, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about Emperor's New Groove. Next Great up. movie. Shockingly good movie, because I remember, uh, like, my memory, I was like, oh, it's okay. And I was like, oh, no, it's actually really good. And not only great movie, great last 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, really good last like, 20 minutes. Like, the whole movie's pretty good. Uh huh. And then the last 20 minutes just. Hammers at home. It like you get a whole lot of amazing bits, uh, fantastic callbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, the, my biggest problem with it, I think, is that uh, I'm big on stru- plot structure, and this this has a lot. Does, of, it has lots of plot. It doesn't have a, it, the structure is atypical. Yeah, it is a weird atypical thing because it starts with a typical a meteor rest, uh, where and meteor rest, where it's basically the middle of the story, and it shows him. He's like, oh, let's show how we got here, um, and then it jumps back and. But sort of the structure to get to that point is very weird. Um, yes. It's it's more segmenty and jumpy than than I would typically like. But it's all all stuff's enjoyable. It's things like that that I feel the the rushed production schedules probably if they had a little bit more time to they polish, could have smoothed it out. And like my guess is they had they had the, the first couple drafts of the story and they're like, all right, good enough, go. Yeah. Um, instead of really taking the time to to hammer out those details, but it, 
it still really worked. Mm -hmm. um, I, I felt um, this one's more stylized. Uh, it's, it's similar to sort of a Hercules or a Mulan in that yeah. it's less, you know, the field, the, the hills of grass are just a green lump. Yes, um, which I'm fine with because it works very well for this kind of story. The characters are, are skewed; they're not photorealistic people. Yeah. Um, great voice cast. Surprisingly, because. That, that's what I think I have a hard time because when I first started watching I'm like David Spade is a little too David Spade for me in the he beginning. He is very David Spade. Um, especially because they start in the beginning where he's doing the voiceover and they'll have him like interrupt the film a couple times. Yeah. And they put I think they put they put the most David Spade stuff like right up front because the point of the story is this jerk learning to be a good person they're like yes. alright we gotta jerk it up real hard in the beginning. Yeah. And that's sort of a problem you get with a lot of films where it's about a jerk becoming a good guy if he's your main character. I could use a little more uh, uh, John Goodman to, to balance him out, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, because John Goodman is the perfect kind of sensitive big guy. Every man slob, kind yeah. of you know, like working class, mm -hmm. uh, good guy. Uh, uh, yeah, so you got David Spade, you got John Goodman, Eartha Kitt. As he is my, oh. um, uh, uh, Patrick Warburton. As who's, Patrick Warburton. Who steals the show so much that he gets his own spinoff. Mm -hmm. uh, when they tried to make into a show, maybe successfully. They no. made into a different show successfully. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They Point made they made Crocs in a Groove and like it was well received, but not well enough received. So they did the Emperor's New School, which was a prequel series. Right. Yes. Um. Yeah. Uh. Just fantastic. All uh, the jokes are, are great though. And like when I was watching, I was like, man, I I don't remember. I didn't remember like a lot of this. And yeah, but the last twenty minutes. It's it's night and day. It's like the opposite of X Men Origins Wolverine. Yes, <laughs> where all of a sudden, the, where all of a sudden the ending just elevates this film beyond what you possibly thought it was going to be. Whereas that one dragged the film down below what you ever thought it could be. Uh, Empress in the Groove, great. Um, do you have any other thoughts on that? Not much. Uh, like nothing specific. Like is it like any any bits that I want to talk about? Would just uh, if you haven't seen it, we'll ruin it. Um, I am not educated enough, it's and real good. I'm not educated enough, and Clayton watched these things, so I'm gonna be a little careful. But there was it's another different culture that they've not done before. Yeah, the South America. Yeah, it's it's South. It's, it's the Central. It's, some, it's, the... Yeah, it's. I don't know what it is. I'm not gonna speak strong. It is. It is south of North America. Yes. <laughs> um. It. it it's it, not. <laughs> is it Peru? I think it's Peru. States. I think it's Peru. Is it Peru? Whatever. It is a Central or South American culture, a cultural aesthetics that they're using in this. And um, I really enjoyed it because, once again, it's, it's as, as we've seen in this marathon, a breath of fresh air is always great. Yeah. It always helps. I don't know. I don't know if they did any sort of great atrocities to the culture, like oh, well, that's just blatantly throwing things from different cultures together, yeah. which they could do. And Clayton might cringe through it. I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, but I at least value that they decided. Okay, let's look more out. And that's why I'm really excited for Mona, which I, you still don't know about. Nope, <laughs> I still don't know anything about. It's Polynesian. Well, now I know something about it. I know. Okay, so moving on. Speaking of water-based cultures, yeah, Atlantis: The Lost Empire. Uh, <laughs> it came out in 2001. This one, I don't know how I haven't seen this one before. It's about, like, steampunk submariners going to Atlantis. I'm yeah. like, that sounds like my movie. With Michael J. Fox. And it, Yeah, and it was. I loved this movie. I had a blast watching it. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. The plot. blast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe um, I should work on this later then. <laughs> Not just... <laughs> um, this one, talk about building a compelling uh, supporting cast. Uh, like, without much... Again, because it's sort of the like heist movie, like everyone has their role, uh, sort of thing. So everyone just has a very they fit into these archetypes. Yeah. Archetypes, um, but they're also they have just enough depth to make them good characters. Yeah, and they and they get a lot of bits, mm -hmm. which for a Disney animated film is important. A lot of bits that work for the plot. Yes, because they are heisting. Like, oh, we need to like make a bridge here. So okay, we're going these people who are on a heist team, and they're doing bits while they're for furthering the plot. Yes, which is just amazing. Um, Oh, yeah, and Michael J. Like, oh. I don't want to take away from Michael J. Fox. I did enjoy his character, and I think the princess is also good. Um, and I even like the villains in this one. But just it's that supporting cast of the the secondary characters are just yes. so good that that's what that's what I left the movie thinking about. Yeah, the 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 medic mm -hmm. uh, was great. Who had one of the best bits in the movie, where he denies giving another character backstory. Yeah, because uh, we like. Someone's like, well, I want to know, what about this mole guy? What's what's his deal? And he's like, no. No. Like, you don't want to know that. You don't tell him. Like, you told me. You told me. I don't, don't want to know that. that. Now I'm telling you, you don't want to know that. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. That's just good writing. That's that, and it was, it was it was such a, a stark change from he was like pretty friendly and jovial for everything else. And then that time he was like, no. Stern. Seriously? 
You do not want to know that. And it, was, it, it, it came them, across really well. And the best thing is it's smart because then let them have the weirdest character possible without grounding him in reality. Yeah. And then, and then the best part is then they never told you. Yeah, it's not like, oh, we get back to it. We find out why it's over. I'm, nope, just no. moving on. <laughs> We're, I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't watched those... Uh, the special feature of the uh, sequels? The sequel yet, so... Um, yeah. Maybe we get into that, but not in the movie. And that's oh man! Part. Remember the professor, the guy who finds him, the tracks him down, who like works yes. with his dad. The great character. Yeah. Another great side character. Oh, it's just very enjoyable. Yeah, a, a really good movie that I. These movies I feel fit together really nicely, like as opposed to like fifties Disney that was a little eclectic. Mm-hmm. This kind of post Renaissance era. Seems to flow better. They, they seem like they're a little bit cohesive as far as minus the first couple. Um, <laughs> but like Ember's New Groove, uh, yeah, Atlantis, Treasure, Lilo Planet, States, yeah. Treasure, Pla- Treasure Planet, all sort of have that sort of feel. Like just really good characterization uh, of these characters. Um, yeah, my mind always group Atlantis and Treasure Planet together and Ember's New Groove and Lilo Sits together. Yeah. Um, and also those are conveniently the pairs of these sort of more graphic um, stylized films and the more realistic films. Absolutely. And I, I don't mean realistic plot wise, but I mean like you know they they put more detail into the backgrounds and the structures in Atlantis. That and they also but they, and they also deal with about the same number of characters. Emperor's New Groove and Lilo and Stitch is smaller number of characters that you learn more about. Uh-huh. And Atlantis and Treasure Planet is a lot more characters that you just kind of get archetypes of, mm-hmm. but they still do a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, and and both both ways work. Mm. Um, Atlantis, though, it's a serviceable plot. It's always moving forward, and I never felt like it lagged. It has uh, a goal from the beginning. Uh, it's like, this is our goal, and then they get there, and then they get another goal. And they're like, all right, let's it may, If I have any complaints, it may take a little long to get to the, the climactic sequence. Once once you sort of get to the vault and find the treasure, yes. and like, okay, and then she's going to, like, she goes to touch the artifact, and all this is about to happen. I'm like, you could have gotten to the bang, bang action and exciting stuff a little quicker, because mm-hmm. um, that did take a little while. Great um, design on their ship. Great design. Uh, yeah, all the design. The, the, uh, across the board, good across design. Across the board. The ship yeah. I love. Atlantis is great. It was a, it was a great sort of, I don't even know, stone punk? Like, I claim to know the term for it. <laughs> claim to know the term for it. I, I don't care. That's the term for it for me now. Um, it's it's sort of like, okay, if if you had, like, advanced technology based in ancient Greece, this is, this is what it would be. So, like... Yeah, they were spaceships that they were flying around at one point, but they looked like spaceships that a, a Greek dude would make. I that's yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. So it was just it was a smart design, and also because it was more steampunky with the other characters, like the submarine and their yeah. tanks and stuff. So it was a great cross section of those two sort of aesthetics meeting in just one very satisfying setting. Mm-hmm. Um, so Lilo and Stitch, great. It's shocking me because this one I remember I fell asleep on. Like this one I tried to watch. Like I remember I was at a friend's house and he put it on, but it was like midnight or something, and yeah. I just like passed out. Uh, so I thought, oh, it must not be that good. I fell asleep on it. Side note, I also fell asleep on Life of Brian the first time I watched it, like, in the intro. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that movie must not be as good as Holy Grail. And surprise, surprise, <laughs> it's amazing. Um, also, like, Lilo and Stitch, amazing. Uh, Lilo. Well, might Holy be my favorite crap. character. In, certainly my favorite character in this chunk. Like, it's in the running for my favorite Disney character of all time. Just the writing and that actress, like, more power to her because she nailed it. Uh, yeah. Um, th- who was the... Is that the one that was... Yeah, the girl from The Ring. Yeah. Uh, so, and she also scared the shit out of me in that movie. So she's good at what she does. Uh, but yeah, Lilo, uh, fa- great character. And also, um, it was real interesting to see the um, this sort of broken home angle. Uh, between Lilo and her sister. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also a thing that since Disney, like you talk about Lion King sort of preparing to deal with death, like it's, it's, I think it's good for Disney films to sort of broach subjects that are difficult to talk to kids about. Like, you know, if your parents pass away, then that's a consequence. Or like, like to a lesser extent, like this is, this was parents being gone. Yeah. But like in a divorce, if you are now in a home with like, let's say you just have a single parent. And they're trying their absolute best. Like that's the sister in Lilo and Stitch. Is great because you see a lot from her. She's point of view. very realistic too, and she she is, and she's trying, and more importantly, she's failing. Yeah, uh, largely. I mean, she's succeeding where it counts. Like she's you know she's not like beating Lilo or something, but like but it's it's a lot because she's, she's she's very com- young. She's completely overwhelmed. Yeah, she is completely out of her depth, uh, and and every time that she tries to 
prove that she has it together, it falls apart, and it's, and it, and she's, it's amazing that she's able to hold it together as well as she does, which even then is not a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but seeing these two characters, Lilo's sister and Lilo, um, interact and, and still stick to each other while also constantly being at each other's throats because of just the stressful yeah. thing that's going on in their lives, uh, is really incredible to see in a, a Disney animated feature. Like, it's also is... really weird to find this in the middle of the alien picture. Yeah, also there's a bunch of aliens. Like, like I think there's a bunch of aliens, but I think about Lilo and her sister and um, the social services. Oh organ. my god, what was his name? <laughs> it's amazing. I keep thinking sweets, but like, no, that was the medic from the no. last movie. Yeah, uh, you look it up. Look it up. Um, it's the greatest. With the name exception, of all time. yeah, all the all the other aliens, like while they're entertaining and the bits they do are funny, they become white noise to me. With the exception of uh, Stitch. Who is another character that Lilo acts with? She speaks in white noise most of the time. Yeah, she speaks in white noise most of the time. But um, Lilo's interactions—you you find out a lot about Lilo through her interactions with others. Uh, so basically, it's her—it's her dealing with the other kids in the dance class and dealing with the sister and the guy who likes the sister and the people around town, and then especially oh, yeah. like her trying to train Stitch. It's just—it's it, what informs her character so well. Um, so, I can't, you can't lose the aliens because Stitch is an integral part to it, and it wouldn't be the same with the dog. You have to have this thing that is unnaturally unruly. Like, you could have done a fantasy character or something if you wanted. Yeah. Um, Cobra Bubbles. Cobra Bubbles, that's it. Uh, played by Ving Rhames, uh, mm. is delightful. So, too delightful. <laughs> so delightful that we were just broken hearted when we found out that he was in none of the sequels. This is one of the most sequel spawning films. Yeah, well, it was the insanely successful for them. Yeah, it was insanely successful. It did, it did gangbusters. Um, it, yeah, it had two or three directed DVD movies and then a TV series as well. Yeah. Um, also, great, great use of licensed music. Yeah, because it was it was not written music. It was basically mostly Elvis music. Um, and it's, it's just more to this amazing character. Like, it seems an easy thing to do, but, you know, making this seven-year-old girl really into Elvis was just a cool character touch, and it informed her character in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Uh. Um, it, you know, it, it showed what she values uh-huh. in, in things. It's, there are other things I can talk about, but Lilo is just such a great character that that's, yeah. that's what that's It's, what it's the insanely about. overshadowing mm-hmm. uh, for everything else. Because um, the action was probably, it was actually pretty decent at the end, the, the, the very chase sequences and... And Stitch is growth as a character, but it's about Lilo. Yeah, it really is. They should have made Lilo the movie. Like, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, because I remember that's one one thing in all of the the because this is one that I didn't see until a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so you were old enough to really appreciate the depth of what was happening. Yes, and 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 just seeing this being advertised when I was a kid or in mm. high school, I guess. Um, I thought it was just Stitch. This little creature running around doing antics, which, while it is absolutely that, um, it is all in the great service of the story. Yeah, that is that is not what the heart of this movie. That's is. what my that's what my impression was too. Like I, I was interested because I was like, oh, it's really funny. And then it starts with the alien stuff, and I'm like, I, yeah, which again is good. Like, like they do it, they I do like it really aliens, well. Yeah, but, but it's. Um, but yeah, as soon as you start to see, but that, it has so much. Lilo just like starts punching that girl. Yeah, they, she goes to dance class. She's late. She's been. She's been like. I'm fairly certain we were watching. I'm like, oh shit! Yeah, you did. Like, <laughs> like this girl like made fun of Lilo, and then Lilo just hauls off and punches this little girl, and you're like, what? you can't do that. You're like, the, that's not allowed. I feel yeah. like I'm Louis C.K. in a bit. Yeah. You can't just punch people. Yeah, that's not like, a thing. Yeah, like, and it and it it, it defines her really quickly because then all of a sudden you're like, what? Like, literally, what is wrong with you? Yeah, she is, like, she is so antagonistic toward the world right away. You need to, you want to know more about her. Yeah, and you, like, just as a person, you're like, how can I help you? Yeah, also, they, yeah. Like, what, how, Because, like, as opposed to, like, David Spade, who's antagonistic to everyone that he meets. You're and like, they, and they're like, how can I punch you? Yeah, this is, <laughs> you, this is, they, they go pretty quick in leaking out that it is that they're, you know, you find out quickly she was raised by her sister, and you can tell that there are some deeper issues going yeah. on there that make it interesting, not just she is pampered and rich and crazy. Exactly, yeah, yeah. she's, uh, it's, it's, it's really great. If you haven't seen it, yeah. definitely check it out. It's an amazing character piece. Uh, the next one is not as much a character piece, but... Talk about making up for the lacking alien action like this. Yes. <laughs> Treasure Planet is amazing. It's just a great sci-fi film. Yeah, it's straight up great sci-fi film. And, uh, it's Treasure it's Treasure Island in space. Yeah, which uh, exactly. un- unabashedly show. So I mean, it's mm-hmm. That's fairly exactly what it is. Um, it's not like oh, we're trying to 
like use the no no it's it it's that story it's like great mouse detective level it's like yes is this, it's not we didn't have a second go is this kind of it's like it's treasure planet <laughs> get like it it's called because this pirate buried his treasure on this planet hmm. um, um also like it, it's great because like the the answer is sci-fi based like the, the they, they don't just do the story and then throw a sci-fi veneer over. It's not like, oh, right, yes, they, they're flying in a space sea and there's laser well, they cannons. And they just have, like, space ships. Which, is, which, is which good. look great. Uh, like, as, which as, look great. As, as ridiculous as it is a bit. But, it but they improve cool. the story in different ways. Like, they, they take it beyond just throwing the aesthetic on it because... Yeah, it's, I mean, end, it's a true adaptation. Like, they adapt it to this world yeah, and to this finding style. Yeah, finding the, the dimensional gate at the end is just... Is, uh, that was so genius to me. That's what really I was like, wow, that's smart. Because that would make make you the, such a good pirate yeah if you just had this gate and I was like that and that's such a sci-fi thing like that is a perfect sci-fi answer I'm like oh love it uh, it looks gorgeous yeah looks great um, like all the space stuff a lot of CG but mm -hmm. uh, but at this point at this point it's polished CD and also yeah like it still doesn't completely hold up but it's also 12 years old and CG also, ages fast and also they're getting better at knowing what they can CG plus I think the first successful that's CG true. character Ben I thought looked fine uh, um the robot? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. With the exception of his eyes, I believe, he was entirely CG. I think they hand animated his eyes because they were having issues with them. There was some part of it. Oh, him. that's right. Yeah. yeah. And that... They're like, they couldn't get his eyes to work correctly, so they just like went in and just threw some eyes floating over all the CG. Oh, that was the, also the space whales. Oh, that's space whales. No, he's fully CG then. That's right. It was space yes, whales. Yes, space whales had the hand-painted eyes over top of CG whales. Right, my feelings on space that's whales. gross. Um, no, so Ben, I, it was a successful character because he was a robot, so they were able to make him geometric where they needed to, um, and it, it was it was good. Um, yeah. God, I'm just trying to yeah, because the the intro's long enough. It's it's a great story. The the villain is fully drawn in a way, and also he has depth. Uh, they do sort of maybe the villain wants to be good without it being cheesy and feeling feeling too played well, out. The, and the, again, that's that's back to the original story. I yeah. mean, that like the, that's the, that dynamic is really strong. When that show was, they they did the the stage version of that and mm -hmm. uh, in the park a couple of years ago, and nice. I ended up seeing it like four times. Nice. Or like three and four half times or something. Like uh -huh. I kept like only catching the end a bunch or only seeing the beginning of the movie. <laughs> um, like it was just something I did for those couple weeks. I was like, oh, I guess I'll go see that again. Like I had nothing to do. Yeah. Um, it's real good. Nice. Uh, it's. This one, I remember I remember the music video, because they have the I'm Still Here song, and I remember seeing like that on, I think they did like VH1 even, they would like run ads for it, and they'd mm. have the song. Uh, but it looks great. I can't get, yeah, it's, I mean, great, it's a lush thing, they can do comets and stars and star trails and spaceships and everything they want, and they make good use of it. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. So that's, I that's all I yeah. got on it. Yeah, so basically, overall, there's some really good movies that suffer from not being those other movies. <laughs> it's it's kind of like yeah. a sequel to a really good movie. It's like Talladega Nights, I argue, is objectively a better movie than Anchorman. It's just that it came after Anchorman, so it's like, it's no Anchorman. I'm like, it is, though. But it is, and it's a stronger plot, and more interesting bits, and it builds more <laughs> better, but whatever. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry, this is not Lion King and Aladdin, and it's not Hunchback of Notre Dame, <laughs> but it's, they're good movies, damn it. Um, and they they just so have some financial success with this. So, like you said, Lilo and Stitch was a huge uh, money maker for him. Uh, you know, so it wasn't even they wouldn't even get dragged down yet. They're still and so prolific. As I told you, that was just that was <laughs> just two thousand to two thousand two. Which is why about. you know, like Emperor's New Groove, they tried to make a series, it failed. Uh, and then Atlantis Lost Empire, they tried to make a series, it failed. Lilo and Stitch that succeeded like yeah. they're throwing it at the wall until someone's stuck like mm -hmm. they're trying real hard I've been really interested in a Treasure Planet series though I'm a sci-fi fan so basically like at that point just having those characters like alright now we have spaceships to like yeah. go on adventures in and like do fun stories like just do fun stories like whatever just watch all those seasons of Firefly oh. just imagine Pirates of the Caribbean but in space I mean, they're making another one, so who knows? I really enjoy those movies. So do I. They get a lot of crap. I'm, I'm four. I enjoyed four. Got rid of Will and what's her face, so. People give the, the two and three crap, but Bill Nye. Right? Like, come on. Oh, so good. So, totally on track. All right, so the next one we got is the, I believe I call it the fall of traditional animation, or. <laughs> um, 
Well, it, the chicken it's, little and we're talking yeah, the rain. You know, it's not entirely the fall of the movies in it, but we'll we'll discuss that next time. So for this one for post Renaissance Disney, thanks for watching with us guys. We're two fat guys. And sorry for wasting your time. So we talked about that for way longer than I thought we were going Me to. Me too. Holy hell. Yeah, we're like 20 minutes late to go pick up pizza. Good thing I live an hour away.